nothing but the blood. Amen. Okay, very good. Well, we're at 1 Kings, so turn in your Bibles to 1 Kings, and we're learning about the legacy of the divided kingdom. Jeroboam fled to the north and established two golden calves, one at Bethel and one at Dan. And Rehoboam took over the kingdom of his grandfather David in Judah. And of course, their headquarters was Jerusalem. And so now we're going to get into this legacy of different kings and how they got in positions of power and whether they were a good king or a bad king. Mm -hmm. And again, what's the determiner of if someone's a good king or a bad king? Following God. <laughs> huh? Following God. Absolutely, following God. Are they going to follow God or not? Amen. Mm -hmm. Are they going to worship the bull God? going to worship pagan gods? They're going to set up Christmas trees? They're going to set up groves of Christmas trees? What are they going to do? And so, sure enough, man, whoo! <laughs> Jeroboam uh, had a young man of God that, but it's sad to say, though, he, he did the wrong thing, didn't he? He was a young man that told him, hey, you're in trouble with God, buddy. You got no business telling people to worship this golden calf. You setting up this convenience. It is the man of God who was disobedient unto the word of the Lord. How would you like to have that put in the Bible about you? <laughs> that, that's the title. There's his epitaph right there. Verse Word on Okay. Well, let's pray that the Lord will keep the lights on. Amen. 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 Now we take these things for granted <laughs> until they're taken from us. But there in chapter 13 and verse 26, it is the man of God who was disobedient unto the word of the Lord. Boy, that's that's almost a Bible verse we should put on the wall to learn our lesson from. Let that not be said of us. Amen? Amen. So let's get this thing we said here. <laughs> Amen. Somebody got a testimony for us today? Somebody had the Lord use you handing out a gospel track or talking to somebody about the Lord? Go ahead, sister. Um, well, at work, um, at Amazon, I, you know, feel sort of out of place, so very different from all the others. A lot of young people, that, sure. and a, a lot of them feel very welcome to wear their rainbows and, mm -hmm. and um, cool. show how wicked they are. And I haven't been around those kind of people as much. Um, right. Um, really trying, you know, there's no room really to witness much because when people are embraced, they really want to be embraced. They just want to be quiet to themselves. Mm -hmm. And uh, when you're working, you're not really close by people much, hardly. Right. I didn't really see much opportunity, but it's been interesting. Uh, mm -hmm. My boss, he told me there's not many like him, but he wants to get to know each of us. And um, 
He has asked me about my personal life and children and where I've lived and what I've done. I heard him talking to the lady next to me, and she said she's writing a book. And so I thought, well, there's something. So the next time he came around, he asked me what's going on in my life, and I said, well, not much now, but I love to know about my book. And then I, he thought maybe that's part of my heritage, but Mary, are you a Mary? <laughs> You know, I knew I dressed differently, and, mm -hmm. and so I explained some of my testimony real quick, and he just listened. Mm -hmm. Doesn't talk much about himself. Um, he says when he has kids someday, he'd like to homeschool him, so he couldn't believe it. Was he just it's really nice to hear him, and he goes around and talks to everybody. He always wants to find how you're doing while he's talking to you. He, he stoked does your job for you. Mm -hmm. Just talking away and, and give you some tips. He to let me know that um, uh, you can still sew things that are similar that it used to be on the first train. They told us, oh no, it's so similar. You just put one item in that bin and move on to the next bin. Um, but now he says, no, that's not true anymore. He tried it on himself. You don't get written up for anything, that's no problem as long as the magenta light doesn't shine on that bed. So you can keep stowing the same item in there. So keep on stowing those shirts, put them in there. So he just wants it library style. And so while everybody else is just curling them up and making them a mess, huh? he says, reach in there with yours, but it lies their shell, two hands, mm -hmm. sweep it up. So I'm trying to make it neat, and he sees what I'm doing. They're not bad, but I'm trying to fill them up. And he liked that part. He was, was trying to get me to go fast. There's no way. I can't go 12 and a half seconds per item, whether it's an earring packet or a big box. I, mm -hmm. I can't do it. My average is about 25, 30. Mm -hmm. But I'm really thankful to have him where he wants to be one-on-one. -on -one. He's given me tips. And he wants to know about us. He goes around everybody. I just think it's great. He wants to know any complaints. Mm -hmm. He let people know he's proud of the fact that he has the highest ratings in this area, in this area, in this area. And safety, he wants us to get back up to safety. And so he just seems to be really wanting to do his job. And, and I'm thankful God's given me the opportunity. Mm -hmm. I talked to another lady that I heard she's writing a book. and. I yelled to her, you write a book? I wrote a book. So she she asked me what my book was about. And I shouted back to her, oh, mine could never be a Christian. Christian, I couldn't publish it. Christian. Said, well, what's it about? She said, well, it's my past life. Uh, I used to be going into the bars. And I said, well, that still needs to be told. You know, God brought you out of that. So... So it's just nice to be given opportunities. Amen. And it's not much <coughs> around, but. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's yeah, all you can do. And then I noticed, too, that some of the guys that are really watching here, there's black men in there, mm -hmm. don't know what to say whether to smile me or not. They keep working, and every day I'm, I'm working and working. And then I see um, them trying to help me out, make the stack of totes and put them aside against the other wall and I thank them. So it's just, mm -hmm. I can see, you know, that some people are just observing. They don't know what to think of you at first and they're right. looking. Amen. Amen. Yeah, a real Christian stands out. Amen. You know, and of course they're, they're going to look you over, try to figure you out. Mm -hmm. Sure. Very good. All right. Well, we're looking at two fellows, Rehoboam and Jeroboam. Rehoboam, that name means he enlarges the people. Obviously, Solomon had hopes that his son would be a blessing to the people and that uh, he would be able to be a blessing to the people. And yet we know that when he gets in a position of power, he's got to have it all his way. And so um, he don't listen to the older man. He listens to the young man. And it's going to make a mess of things. And here old Jeroboam, of course, uh, he's wanting to 
worship God his own way and set up these golden calves. And his name uh, means, uh, see, what did I say? That was Rehoboam. What does Jeroboam mean? Time to wake up, I, JJ. I did not set this alarm. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Jeroboam means the contentious people, amen? Or the people contend. So I say Jeroboam means the contentious people. Because you leave it up to the people, and there's going to be a lot of confusion if you, they're going to get their way, amen? Now, I point out these names of these fellas and what they, the name means because obviously mm -hmm. somebody's naming somebody because in their life at that time there's some influence and I think of the name Abijah. Now isn't that a beautiful name Abijah? I've never heard anybody named Abijah. Have you? Mm -hmm. And yet it's a nice Bible name. I don't know why anyone would not. And the name Abijah means God is my father. So let's read these first four verses here of Jeremiah, or no, Jeremiah, not Jeremiah, 1 Kings, <laughs> chapter 13. Something about that J word, man, it just gets in there, doesn't it? Uh, can you get into Jeroboam, you get thinking Jeremiah, you know, but it's Jeroboam. And Jer we're going to read about uh, how that Ahijah, or Abijah, Abijah he is... Uh, prophesying Jeroboam's fall. So let's read these first four verses. At that time, Abijah, the son of Jeroboam, fell sick. And Jeroboam said to his wife, Arise, I pray thee, and disguise us thyself, that thou be not known to be the wife of Jeroboam, and get thee to Silo, to Shiloh, Behold, there is Ahijah the prophet, Ahijah the prophet, which told me that I should be king over this people, mm -hmm. and take with thee ten loaves and crack nails and a cruise of honey, and go to him. He shall tell thee what shall become of the child. So this child Abijah has fallen sick. Mm -hmm. And Jeroboam's wife did so, and arose and went to Shiloh, and came to the house of Ahijah. But Ahijah could not see, for his eyes were set by reason of his age. Mm -hmm. Amen. All right, so let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for this uh, wonderful story. And again, help us to apply it to where we are in our days. Mm -hmm. Today, where we're living, and how there's so many similarities. So we know that the thing men seem to learn from history is they never learn from history. And so once again, we see this cycle of history coming through, even our land today. And uh, so help us to see what's going really on and not be fooled by all the tricks and lies of the devil. In Jesus' name now, we ask it and amen. 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 So have a seat there. So... Let me look up that Ahijah, amen? Mm -hmm. Let's see what that name means, amen? Right. Yes, Ahijah, the prophet at Shiloh. And so he's known as a Shilonite. <laughs> amen? He was a Levitical prophet in Shiloh. And... Um, It's interesting that this name is quite common in the Bible. There are several fellows named Ahijah. And so we'll look into that a little more, amen. Yeah. It's of significance that he's at, where's he at? He's at Shiloh. See, he's not too far from Jerusalem. <laughs> he's not way up north in Dan. Amen. Uh, but he's there at Shiloh, where the tabernacle was first set up 
uh, as a temporary worship place for the nation of the children of Israel. And certainly the question would arise, why? Why would Jeroboam want to send his old lady to see the prophet in Shiloh? That's a good question. Can't he just go to his own golden calf exactly. in Shiloh? Exactly. Can't he go to his own golden calf in Dan and get all the answers he needs right. from the cheap punks he hired exactly. that graduated from his colleges? No, he wanted a real honest to God man of God. Right. <laughs> right. He truth. wanted somebody who believed the old Bible was still the Bible. Amen. Amen. That's right. That's right. <laughs> he wanted a for certain word, and there's the difference, see. I was coming along through town this uh, weekend, and uh, I seen some boys street preaching over at the Custer statue. Yeah. So, of course, I rolled my window down. I definitely wanted to see exactly. what they were handing out, you know. Exactly. So sure enough, they had some little book of the ESV, oh. uh, piece of garbage, of course. But then they had a regular gospel track with King James verses in it, showing people how to be saved. Mm -hmm. One boy had him a little PA system. Another boy was, you know, handing out the tracks as you stopped at the light. And if you rolled your window down, you could get one. Mm -hmm. So I'm glad I stopped to get one. Because mm -hmm. I got thinking about it and how... You know, this thing really troubles me, and I'm always thinking about it, how that it's kind of sad that we're living in such a day where it's hard for a man to find the real word of God. Because right. like the Bible says, there is a famine in the land in Amos. It says there's a famine in the land for the word of God in Amos uh, chapter 8. Mm -hmm. And that's where we're at. And I got thinking how, because again, all of them are very comfortable in preaching. They still preach. Right. And they'll even stand out and street preach and hand out tracts. But see, their emphasis is only the gospel. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. And since even Romans 1 says that Paul said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. And of course, all the new versions change it and just say gospel. They don't say of Christ. Mm -hmm. It's right. not just any old good news that will save you, boys and girls. Mm -hmm. It better be the gospel of Christ. Mm -hmm. For it is the power of God unto salvation. That's what it says. To the Jew first and also to the Greek. Yes, sir. And so it is the power of God. Yes. And so they overemphasize the gospel being the power of God to the point that it negates the authority of the scripture. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> they're content to only have the gospel mm -hmm. and that emphasis of Christ's death, burial, and resurrection and preaching the gospel and claiming to get people saved, that that's the most important thing, see. And it's easy to be accepting of it because there's nothing wrong with people learning about Jesus dying and being buried and rising from the dead the third day. It is a wonderful good news. Yeah. That is the gospel of Christ. Yeah. Amen. But now any Jesus that was buried any other time and rose any other time would be the wrong gospel. Mm -hmm. Some worship a Jesus that died on Friday and rose on Sunday. Mm -hmm. Well, that can't. that's not my Jesus. Right. Most people don't even know that there's more than one Jesus being preached. They have to read, read, read a lot more Bible to get to all that, you know. And so that's a little bit, I've, I've begun to realize that this week, especially when I saw those boys out. Now they're doing their best, see, and they think they're serving God. The Apostle Paul thought he was serving God too when he was killing Christians. So Satan is powerful, buddy. He can deceive people quite easily. Even the book uh, of Peter warns us that we can forget that we've been washed from our sins in the blood of Jesus. Wouldn't that be sad to be in that position? Yes. And so it's very interesting and of some significance that we see at that time Abijah, the son of Jeroboam, fell sick. So Jeroboam said to his wife, Arise, I pray thee, and disguise thyself. 
and I'm going to send you down to Shiloh to talk to a real man of God that has some real authority, like an authorized 1611. <laughs> Amen. Mm -hmm. So that we can get some word here on our child and perhaps he can do something for us to help us. So we'll make sure we bring him some gifts because all my preachers operate by gifts. So we'll make sure we take him some honey and some other things, you know, some crack mills and some of these, these other things that he might like. Now, that proved that his religion and his golden calves were only political expedients. See, I don't know what church John Rockefeller belonged to, but John D. Rockefeller is known to have been a Baptist. Mm -hmm. The rich tycoon of New York was known to be a Baptist. But I got news for you. Mm -hmm. They must have just been a Baptist in name only like so many are today. Mm -hmm. He must have been there because he definitely was interested in the IRS tax write-off every year so that he was so smart to know that he absolutely owned no homes, no nothing, no nothing. But yet he was the president of everything mm -hmm. his corporations owned because he had it all put in trusts and in corporations to where he could control it all, but he didn't own nothing. Mm -hmm. And there's a lesson there for some other people to learn if they were smart. And so the Bible says... Yes, get thee to Shiloh. Behold, there is Ahijah the prophet, which told me that I should be king over this people. And take with thee ten loaves and cracked nails and a cruise of honey, and go to him. He shall tell thee what shall become of the child. Sometimes you don't want to know what's going to happen. Right. That's why it's better off to don't, don't get yourself up in a big... Huff about what's going to happen tomorrow. That's right. You know, don't be thinking you got to know what's going to happen tomorrow. So you're reading your horoscope, you know, and you're reading this, that, and the other. Thing. <laughs> horoscope. That's right, brother. You said it right. Because <laughs> next thing you know, man, you're way out there, and there's devils coming to visit your house. Because you ain't supposed to be meddling with that stuff. Right. It isn't your department. You just trust the Lord and live by faith every day. Amen. And he'll take good care of you. And so the Bible tells us this wonderful story. How, okay, so she dudes all up, making it look like she's come from a long way. She's going to be able to fake the preacher out pretty easy because, number one, he can't even see. He's blind as a bat. He's one of nine listed in the Bible, afflicted with blindness. So that's of some Holy Ghost significance, I'm sure. <laughs> and nine is the number for fruitfulness in the Bible. And so, let's pick it up at verse 5. And the Lord said unto Ahijah, behold, the wife of Jeroboam cometh to ask a thing of thee for her son. For he's sick thus, and thus shalt thou say unto her. For it shall be when she cometh in, that she shall feign herself to be another woman. Mm -hmm. And see, that's the day we're living in. <laughs> you know, everybody's got their smartphone in hand and you can talk to anybody you want, and you can pretend to be anything you want. This is true. And the other person on the other end <laughs> receiving your text can assume you're whatever you say you are. And yet the truth is, nine times out of ten, everybody's playing this game of pretend. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. And like Paul said, comparing ourselves among ourselves, we're not wise. Right. And, and so everybody's living in this pretend world. Uh, and... Um, it's kind of funny. I was telling my wife, I said, no, I've been reading several comments people have made about when Kubrick made the 
2001 Space Odyssey because everybody says, oh, wow, you know, there was just so many things he did in that film. It's just so realistic. And so many people are saying, ever since I went to the theater and saw it back during the 70s, I, uh, I've, I've just watched it and watched it. And, you know, many people have watched it over 50 times. They said, I just enjoy it. It's so rich with so much imagery. I said, you know, a lot of that is interesting and truth about how we imagine space to be. Because yeah. we all have an imagination. We live by our imagination. She's supposed to represent herself like she's somebody else. But you can't fool God. Amen. I was getting a few groceries yesterday. There's a lady in front of me. She's just trying to fit in with the crowd, look like the crowd had herself all tatted up and stuff. But believe you me, her rings betray the fact that she must be Frenchie's wife because of all the diamonds. Wow. You wouldn't believe all the diamonds on that ring she was sporting. You know, she's trying to blend in with her slacks and that and look like everybody had all kinds of tats. But believe me, she was a lady of, that was had some status because mm -hmm. she ain't going to take off that ring. <laughs> and that's what we're living at. You do know, don't you, that your NASA has spent $95 billion with a B. Mm -hmm. And all the media saying, oh, it's just so worth it. This Artemis project. Yeah. Why is it called Artemis? Why does it have to be Artemis? Right. You know, mm -hmm. the sister of Apollo. Mm -hmm. yeah. Did I say Apollo? Yeah, that's right. Brother. Maybe that's why they called it Artemis. And so all week they've been trying to push that button and send that baby to the moon, right? Oh, we got us a new motor, buddy. We think we can make it to the moon this time. But yet, what is it that's inside of it? What is inside of it? Three mannequins. Three mannequins. Two female and one male mannequin. Why are we sending mannequins to the moon? Well, we want to see how their flesh is affected by all the radiation that's out there in space. I thought we already figured that out way back in 1965 exactly. when we never sent no mannequins to the moon. Exactly. It's almost like we never went. Isn't that an interesting idea? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so the media this week has said, oh, it's going to be worth it. Spending $95 billion yeah. to send these mannequins to the moon. And they keep pushing the button and they can't get it to go yet. Maybe today. Yeah. <laughs> Crazy, ain't it? We say one thing, but we <laughs> represent ourselves as something else. Because mm -hmm. we can't do the truth. Amen? Amen. Love We'd rather believe a lie. Yeah, and so it's of some interest that it says here, verse 6, And it was so, when Ahijah heard the sound of her feet, as she came in at the door, that he said, Come in, thou wife of Jeroboam, why faintest thou? thyself to be another mm -hmm. for I am sent to thee with heavy tidings mm -hmm. <laughs> she's come to his house and he says God sent me to tell you something <laughs> mm -hmm. go tell Jeroboam thus saith the Lord there it is that old prophetic formula again mm -hmm. thus saith the Lord God of Israel for as much as I exalted thee from among the people and made thee prince over my people Israel and rent the kingdom away from the house of David, and gave it to thee. And yet thou hast not been as my servant David. Mm -hmm. See, way back there when his hand was all shrunk up, and the prophet restored his hand, the preacher restored his hand with his quick prayer, he didn't show any repentance. No. He wasn't so happy about it that he was going to do anything different. Well, here I let you take off these ten tribes. 
do your own thing. But you haven't kept my commandments. Mm -hmm. But David kept my commandments. And he followed me with all his heart to do that which was right in mine eyes. But has done evil above all that were before thee. Mm -hmm. Now see, when he says all, that means all. Right. Yeah. There were a lot of little old two-bit rulers. There's governors. You got mayors. You got all kinds of rulers. Thou hast done evil above all that were before thee, for thou hast gone and made thee other gods and molten images to provoke me to anger and hast cast me behind thy back. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. You don't turn your back on the Lord. Right. You show some respect and reverence to the Lord. Amen? That's a sure sign of a backslider, ain't it? When you turn your back on the Lord and go chasing the world, the flesh, and the devil. So not merely kings, but all other rulers. Other gods, Jehovah does not recognize the calves as being what Jeroboam intended. Mere, but, mere political expedience, that's all that they were. And that's how your present politicians look at the church and churches and even their own religions. Right. They're a member of a church, yeah. but they can't even adhere to what their own church believes. They're so caught up with corruption and stealing that almighty dollar. And so it says here in verse 10, Therefore, behold, I will bring evil upon the house of Jeroboam. Amen. Jeroboam, as any fleshly, self-centered, charismatic, he knew where to go to get the truth. Amen. Amen. He ain't got it. He's pretending he does. He's pretending he's got authority. He's pretending he can tell you how you should worship God and when you should worship God and whether or not you should have a mask on when you sing in your church. But that's straight out of hell. Matthew 7, 21, that's why Jesus said, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. It's very important you recognize the Lord God of the Bible and the fact that he's still up there in heaven. Yeah. Amen. Amen. There is a real heaven and a real hell. I wrote something about Noah's Ark and how that the problem with the people today is nobody believes the Bible and some clown wanted to attack me. So he wrote and attacked me by saying, well, Noah's Ark can't be true because how could anybody get all the animals of the world inside an ark? Well, what an idiot. Again, just another idiot doesn't know that Nothing in the Bible says he had to have a full adult-sized brontosaurus or Tyrannosaurus rex even. He really didn't have to have nothing in there but their eggs. <laughs> he could have put a hen to sit on them to make sure they stay warm, you know. <laughs> Many a person's hatched up duck eggs, all kinds of eggs. Even the story of the ugly duckling is the idea of somehow a swan's egg gets put underneath a goose's egg, you know. I mean, a goose, a mother goose, so she can hatch it. Mm -hmm. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils? That's got to be some kind of proof. Somehow I did something right somewhere. I am somebody. No, not necessarily. And in thy name done many wonderful works. Maybe it was just the name of the Lord that did it. Maybe it wasn't you. Just because you so piously pronounced something and even claimed and said the name of the Lord, that don't mean nothing. See where people are wrong to think, well, I'm out here street preaching for Jesus. That don't mean nothing. And so he said, 
cast out devils in thy name, done many wonderful works, and then will I profess unto them. Because they are only professors, they're not possessors. Amen. So I'll make a profession back to them. I never knew you, though, see. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. They're perverts. They're taking a good thing and twisting it. They think they can just twist something that's good to their advantage. They being as evil as sin. <laughs> and so Jeroboam was a, this type of person. He thought he had everybody conned. But he ain't conning nobody. Because even a blind prophet can see the truth. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> but he knew where to go get the truth. But he was interested in the truth only to make his life easier. Oh, well, uh, I don't want my baby hurt. I'm going to have to get a hold of the old prophet and see what he wants me to do. I'll give him some honey and some stuff. And uh, we'll see if we can get on his good side here. Yeah, kind of sounds like somebody I know. Look at John chapter 2, verse 23. Mm -hmm. Now, when he was in Jerusalem at the Passover, John 2, 23 says, In the feast day, many believed in his name when they saw the miracles which he did. But Jesus did not commit himself to them. See? Because he knew all men. It's just too politically expedient right now. Oh, they see where the wind's going, so they're going to pretend they love Jesus too. But before the whole thing's over, they'll be saying, crucify him. We have no king but Caesar. That's the truth, bro. Amen. Amen. Well, we wouldn't want anything to jeopardize our 501c3 and our uh, tax status and our retirement fund. We got a 401k. We can't jeopardize that. And needed not that any should testify of man, for he knew what was in man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think I know what's in man, too, because I is one. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. And so let's all stand and bow our heads in prayer. Lord, thank you for your word today and help us to be 100% sincere, 100% true and honest and of a contrite and repentant spirit. Amen. And in Jesus' name we ask it. And amen.